Hello YouTube, this is Oklahoma Bridges, and I'm here with the uh, credenza, and you might notice that there's no uh, closed lid while playing decal, that's because this is a different machine. I've um, found another credenza with a cabinet that's in a nicer condition than the um, other one that you've seen. This one's just a little bit older too. I see the seal number there is a uh, 29,000. Uh, the serial number on the other machine was actually 30,000, and um, I guess there's a little bit of inconsistency about whether they put the decal in or not. But I've been uh, working on cleaning the machine up. See, I've still got a little bit of dirt there in the corners I haven't been able to get out yet. And uh, I've rewired the machine, put new uh, new cord on. Here's the uh, what I've used for the main power cord. Is some of this uh, cloth covered wire. It actually had a pretty nice power cord that came with it already that I think had the original end on it where it goes into the um, uh, cabinet at the back but um, I went ahead and redid it. I went ahead and redid all the wiring underneath with some uh, cloth covered wire so it looks original and um, this thing was full of needles and I found uh, quite a few good uh, tungsten needles too in fact, I'd say for what I paid for the machine, I just about uh, bought needles and um, got a machine for free. I found so many. haven't gone through them yet to see how many are good needles, but I suspect quite a few of them will be good looking at the ones I did look at. Um, I'm going to do a little video here on the um, brake leather replacement. I've already got the old leather out and uh, one that just look at this machine a little bit and talk about the orthophonics. Uh, this is a uh, an 830, uh, commonly known as the Credenza. See it's got the big horn opening like most Credenzas have. I've got this machine sitting here in the uh, in the living room where the uh, VV17 normally would sit, I've sort of swapped swapped the machines. I've put the VV17 over in the corner where the credenza used to sit. I've got the credenza sitting here where the VV17 usually sits. And this is a pretty nice machine. I've already rebuilt the uh, um, dash pots on the lid. Uh, I had a lot of trouble when I got this thing when I was looking at the shop getting the lid to open and close the um, This dash pot over here was totally full of uh, Needles and there was a few in there that had broken off and was jamming it up And that's why I had a lot of difficulty getting the lid open when I first got it uh, but it works pretty good now and uh, this machine still has nice uh, nice veneer on the top it's real real nice so I'm really excited about that um, I've already installed the tone arm off the other machine here's the um, tone arm that came with this one as you can see the uh, back bracket has been broken and uh, this brown painted back bracket piece that's been grafted on there is off of a uh, off of a uh, 255 uh, orthophonic portable um, so real funny that they found a uh, another pot metal tone arm back bracket to uh, cannibalize and, and stick on there it's obviously been there a long time look at the square nuts holding it on but there's the back bracket and tone arm off of the other machine it's got the uh, the Ron Sitko um, reproduction aluminum back bracket and I probably am going to go ahead and and rebuild this tone arm and put on the other machine I um, when I can find an Amberola 50 mechanism I plan on converting the other uh, credenza into a um, a um, Amberola 50 um, mechanism um, phonograph It'd be really easy to do, just make another motor board that sits in there. I wouldn't have to modify the machine in any way. Uh, but then I'd be able to get the fool around a little bit with um, electrically recorded cylinder records, reproducing them with the um, orthophonic horn. And just something for fun. 
something me and another collector have talked about numerous times. But uh, if you're not familiar with uh, orthophonic Victrolas, this is often a problem spot on an orthophonic Victrola is the uh, back bracket on the originals for pot metal and they often are uh, are broken. Like I said, this is a, um, a reproduction that I got from Ron Sitko. And um, I know I've had a little bit of a discussion with another YouTube viewer about um, reproducers. And this is my um, rebuilt uh, reproducer that you've seen in the videos of the other orthophonic machine. This is the uh, reproduction um, body that's sold by um, uh, Ron Sitko, and uh, they're real nice. And um, one of the questions that was asked of me of what could happen if a, a uh, reproducer will not play at all, that the um, um, needle bar can come unattached from the um, diaphragm, and if you... Uh, look at these and how they're made you'll see the needle bar is this part right here this black part here that the uh, needle attaches to and in the middle there is where the needle uh, bar attaches to the diaphragm and you see it's soldered the uh, end of the needle bar has a fork shape and it's soldered to the diaphragm. If that solder breaks, then the needle bar will not transfer any energy to the diaphragm and it will not um, play. So that uh, can be a problem. The original um, reproducer that came with the other credenza had this problem. Um, it worked actually for the first couple records I played on it and then it um, suddenly went silent while playing a loud record and then on examination I found that the um, solder there had uh, the joint had come apart so I stuck a soldering iron down in there and heated it up got the solder to flow again and um, uh, made it work um, I don't have that reproducer anymore. I used parts of that reproducer and parts of another reproducer to make this reproducer here. Um, these uh, reproduction parts are made out of aluminum, but the, the diaphragm and the needle bar and the other parts are um, originals. And uh, it's a very nice playing reproducer. It's the one that you've heard in a lot of the other videos. I've got a tungsten needle in it. I also have a nice original um, reproducer, and this is off of a VV255 portable. And uh, it's a pot metal reproducer, but it's stable still. You see there's not uh, really any cracks in it, so to speak. And uh, it's in good shape. It might be deformed just a tiny bit. I think this is dished just slightly, the back is, but it's not as deformed as a lot of them can be. It still has the impedance uh, matching um, piece there on the inside. And uh, a lot of people, I've, I've read comments about these, about, uh, about they think that they're different than the heads used um, on the console machines. They're actually the same. All the ones that I've ever seen are actually the same. The only difference is, is they have the holes drilled in them to put this um, cover with this screen over the front. But if you take this cover off, there will be um, uh, a hole right here that usually isn't tapped for um, the little uh, covers that go over the ball bearings. And uh, uh, the other my uh, friend that's a, also a collector and does a lot of these anytime that he gets a, a portable a reproducer head he will tap the uh, the holes there in case someone wants to make a console head out of it and if you really wanted to you could take this cover off and fill those holes in and um, you would have a head for a console that looks just like a uh, an ordinary one um, you know go refinish the um, the paint on it and uh, you wouldn't know that it came off of a uh, portable. This one's got a real nice um, tungsten tip in it. This is one of the tungsten needles I found in this machine while cleaning it up. I uh, 
really enjoy using the uh, tungsten needles. Um, they seem to uh, be a lot gentler on the records. So, anyway, this style uh, machine has the uh, older style brake compared to the other machine. Um, the uh, the breakover point serial number wise between this style brake and the other style brake is actually one of the serial numbers in between the two machines I've got here. So now I've got one of each, and I gotta say I actually don't like this style brake messing with it. Um, it's a little bit um, more fiddly. The switch is on the bottom side instead of on the top. And the uh, the brake shoe is mounted on this little piece here. Um, but the old shoe is totally worn off. And I've got a little piece of a old leather sewing machine belt that's about the right size. And I've opened this um, up a little bit to mount it in there. Uh, but what I'm going to use is a new piece of leather. And I've got... Um, Leather bits here that I actually bought from uh, Time Savers. These are um, uh, leather for making new uh, hammer heads for chiming clocks. And I've got several different thicknesses here. So I'm going to pick a thickness that matches the uh, original um, leather. And I've got, uh, I think this is going to be the closest right here. This has got the um, uh, Time Savers part number HM180, and the 180 refers to the diameter of the leather. So we open this up. Look at this leather here. Compare it with the sewing machine belt. And we'll see how it fits in the. Uh, say that's just a little too small. And there's some more uh, 180 size. Here's some that's 148 and I've got some too that's uh, uh, 360. And so we're gonna, I think these have gotten swapped because this looks smaller than that does. Yeah, I think this right here is the uh, uh, 140 or 148. Had these all out at one point, so I don't think any of them have gotten put back in the right bag, but it's okay. Yeah, there's two in here. Okay, that looks real close to the uh, sewing machine belt leather so I think we'll use that size there this is nice and soft and new and it'll it'll work a lot better but we'll we'll put that in there we'll cut a little piece off and we'll put that in there and then we'll squeeze that back together and um, that'll um, help to break the turntable a lot better So I'm going to cut a little piece off here. And just uh, select the length to cut off here. And I think about uh, that long will probably work just fine. that. If I want to make it longer, I can. I, that might be a little tad short. And then uh, kind of go over the end just a little bit to uh, uh, square it up just a bit. That. I'll uh, use that little longer one there. And uh, using the um, turntable post here as sort of a rest for the camera to help uh, hold it so I don't have to uh, do this uh, one-handed. Okay, 
I've got this, and we'll uh, use the pliers here and open this up a little bit more. I don't want to open it up too much. It's just stamped steel. Don't want to break it any. It's not like you can get replacements easily. So, got that in there about like that. If you can see that or not, how that's in there. I'll use the pliers to uh, squeeze this back together. Like that. It's on there pretty tight. And it sticks out just a little bit. It's pressing on the spring, but that that probably won't make much of a difference. And, uh, okay. Let's pick up some of this stuff and we'll put the, uh, turntable back on and we can try this out. Now, if I had a spool of sewing machine belt leather, I would, uh, probably have just that same size. I probably would have just cut it off that, but I don't. So, um... We did it like this. Step back here a minute to grab the turntable and go look at the uh, cabinet there. This machine's in pretty good shape. The uh, woman who had it at the store had uh, got it from somebody over in Scheidler, Oklahoma, and how it got there. I don't know. Next time I go up there, I'm going to ask her. Get the, uh, make sure the turntable drops down on the pin. And, uh, brake lined up with the uh, trip pin there and you can see the mark there left by the automatic brake trip lever there on the old um, tone arm from the broken back bracket and you see this trip lever doesn't match up quite with it uh, it might be that this uh, is mounted on there backwards or it might just be in a different position but um, I get the other tone arm rebuilt I'll either put this one Leave this one on it, or I'll put the other tone arm back on. It's not as positive a braking action as the uh, other style brake does. I think it's because of... Um, it's because of the way this is mounted on there it's just got that little spring that presses lightly on it I think that's probably a real reason why they switched the other style brake because the other style brake this is all made um, as one rigid assembly and it, and it acts a lot more positively also it hang it just wants to hang up a little bit every once in a while Wait a second here, we'll plug it in and uh, and uh, play a record here. Haven't seen any videos with the uh, the other head, so we'll we'll do that.
the speed does not sound right. So since we've got a, uh, a fluorescent light here, this is my uh, my friend, my other collector friend here. This is a strobe disc he made. It was a sort of a freebie back when he was selling machines. And we're going to put it on there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but she's running pretty fast. So we'll slow it down. adjust these I like to adjust these to where it um, to where when it's when it's playing with a record on there especially with the spring motor types to where it's just slightly going a little too fast you can just see the ring the um, the bars are moving clockwise slightly they're not uh, totally stationary there it stopped I'll have to come up with some new grill cloth on this. Okay, with the needle on there, that shuts off much more respectable length of time. So, that was, uh, if you're curious, that was a little bit of Paul Whiteman dancing tambourine. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed watching this and uh, look forward to seeing some more videos with uh, the new credenza. So, this is Oklahoma Bridges signing off.